Welcome to the Merch Minds Podcast, where we discuss everything about the merch by Amazon business in the print-on-demand industry. Here are your hosts, Glenn and Young. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Merch Minds Podcast, episode number 14. My name is Glenn with the YouTube channel Hustler Hacks, and my co-host, Young. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Happy and New Year. Happy New Year again, and a great, again. A great yeah. merch New Year. And uh, exciting episode today, because we're going to be talking about the 10 best design practices for merch. And if you're excited for uh, learning a little bit about designing and tips about design, then this episode is for you. But we're going to start off, like we normally do, talking about sales and talking about some merch updates, maybe some uploading updates. And uh, Yang, you want to start off? Let us know what's going on in your merch world. Sure, man. Uh, so I'm, um, let's see. Last week, I said I was at 215 shirts live. I'm now down to 205. I deleted a few myself, but apparently Amazon deleted the, um, the others. Uh, I had a situation where one of my best sellers was deleted, and I, and I don't know why. In my opinion, um, you know, it was an original design. Uh, you know, I followed their terms of service to the T, but for some reason, it was deleted. Again, you know, this is why we always say, you know, this is their platform, and, you know, this is their playground. You know, they pretty much call the shots, but, you know, it's frustrating, but, you know, it, it was taken off. They deleted it. Oh, well, life goes on. But so I now have 205 shirts live. Okay. And my last seven days, let's see, I sold 32 shirts. Let me just move my browser over here. Uh, my sales, my product purchases was $610.08. And my estimated royalties two hundred and twenty dollars and sixty six cents you know i'm not making a lot but compared to last year when i was making zero you know you're dominating i'm i'm, I'm pretty happy with those numbers especially again with the shirts lot you know how many shirts that i have live i can't complain and you know this is you know i don't have any physical inventory this is all done you know, virtually through the internet, through the browser, and uh, yeah, two hundred and you know, as of now, my last set, you know, again, seven days, two hundred and twenty. And so, if I do my math correctly, today is what the eleventh. I think I'm on, I'm on pace to do about nine hundred bucks this month. Okay, not bad, not bad. Almost yeah. an extra thousand bucks. There we go. Yeah, Let's not bad at all, yes, sir. And um, I, we'll talk, okay, so we talked about the last seven days, talked about um, what you're making, how many you have live, and now we're getting into a little bit about the uploading. So today, we ended up finding out some people are able to upload t-shirts and others aren't. And your update right now, as far as January 11th, it's in the afternoon now, because I remember I told you, check in the afternoon, see if it's... Yeah. See if it's alive. You did, you, See if it's live. You did right message now. me. And as of right now, you cannot upload anything. I cannot upload anything. And I told you over the phone, man, I'm gonna kick Jeff Bezos' ass. I'm, <laughs> whoa, I'm getting, whoa. I'm getting a little pissed. No, I'm <laughs> but no, uh, like you said, apparently Amazon did open up the floodgates to some folks. Uh Glenn, I know you now have the opportunity to upload what 20 shirts per day um actually 40 per day are you messing with me <laughs> nope 40 per day shut up yes sir oh man i thought you said 20 but yeah um i to you know right now i cannot upload any shirts and the same thing goes uh i talked to my brother earlier today he's also tiered up to 500 and uh, he can't upload any designs either yet um so going back to the merch minds facebook group if you haven't joined it please join it's a free group 
Uh, inside the group, we have different members. They submitted um, their tier and how many uploads they can uh, submit per day. So um, just really quickly, Amy tiered up to 500 and she can upload three per day. What? Um, which is what you're at. What, 500? I should be at 1,000, but yes, um, I'm at 500. Okay. Um, of course, Mike, which we talked to uh, the Treasure Gnome recently, and he's tiered up to 4,000. He can upload 20 per day. And he's actually one of the rare breeds because he was able to upload 20 per day even throughout the last, like, three or four weeks. So... Um, what? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> so yeah, he's I don't know. He he had the opportunity for a good while already. Um, we do have quite a bit of people that are tiered up to twenty five. It looks like nobody right now that I can see in the group um, that's at twenty five can upload yet. Uh, Daniel, which was a guest um, earlier uh, last year, uh, tier up to two thousand and he can upload ten per day. Dude. It seems this is getting frustrating because it seems like everyone and their mom is being able to upload shirts and I can't. Well, right now it seems like everyone's trying to kind of play like a little guessing game to see why are certain people able to upload something and why others aren't. So I really don't know. And maybe we'll find out something soon. But it just seemed like randomly, like randomly today this happened. So wow. I don't know. I think I think hopefully by the end of the week everybody's able to at least upload something hey jeff if you're listening i i apologize i i didn't mean he to didn't say mean what that. I, had. I, didn't, I didn't mean to uh say that earlier so if you can just you know you know sometimes the young just gets a little frustrated and and you things know. happen things are hook sad but hook me up man <laughs> hook me up jeff <laughs> hook him up to the ten thousand tier oh man that'd be nice huh <laughs> So that's what's going on right now. Let us know if you want to join the group. You can let everybody know what your uh, tier is and how many you can upload. So if you want to take a look at that, Merch Minds on Facebook. Uh, as far as my numbers go, uh, they've been around the same. Uh, the last seven days is still like 160. I'm averaging maybe like they have gone down a little bit, like one, like maybe uh, 10 to 12 per day sales per day um but okay. for the week they're around like 160 sales for the last seven days but it seems like the last two or three days they have gotten down a little bit uh per day at least mm. um so how, I, many, how many how many shirts do you have live gone from the 60 day rule so right now i'm at 11 30 so 1130 left okay wow so um, I'm trying to, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited to get back because like we talked about a little bit earlier, I am now able to submit 40 designs a day, which I was trying to get 100 in a week last year, which I was able to do right. for most That's of the right. time. So um, 40 a day is pushing it. I mean, I would like to do 40 a day. I mean, don't get me wrong, but I got to find the time to, to knock that out. But I really want to boost up my my weekly numbers um, so to try to get there. so if you were doing a hundred per week last year mm -hmm. so and now now they, they're giving you an opportunity to upload obviously what you said 40 per day obviously mm -hmm. you're in a better situation now it seems like well i guess if i could have like done as many as possible back then I mean, because I didn't have a limit per day, um, but it does kind of change things. Cause like I said, I guess my, my schedule, I was all about like working on the designs and then uploading it on Friday. Like I would upload all of my shirt designs on a Friday. Yeah. Um, so now I can't do that all in once. Now I have to go by day. So if I have them all saved in draft, you know, they'll be ready to go, but um, it does kind of change things around a little bit. Okay. So now I'm like two, you know, now they're allowing me to upload 280 per week, but um, okay. yeah, I'm really going to have to work hard to try to fill those 280 per yeah. week, but let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> so in, in all seriousness, you know, this is good news. Uh, it sounds like it is Amazon, good news. yeah, it sounds like Amazon is letting people in, uh, 
to upload shirts. So I think obviously it's just a matter of having patience and uh, hopefully I'll be able to upload shirts here within the next day or two. Uh, today's Wednesday. So if I can upload, if I can start by the, by this weekend, uh, that'd be really nice. Yes, sir. And uh, I guess let us know. Keep us updated on that. And also, do you think, last question before we get into our topic, do you think that they will leave this per day type of situation for maybe the next three, four months, the whole year, half a year? <laughs> do you think, think they're going to, do you think they're just going to like eventually, you know what? You can just go back to uploading as usual. No, I don't think, I don't think, I think those days are over because. It, if they if they allow everyone to upload as many shirts as they can again, I mean things are just going to get out of control again, right? Yeah, and that's what they don't want, obviously. Yeah, uh, you know they're just overwhelmed. Um, I mean, who knows? Again, you know we talked about this in the past, and you know I can only imagine what the warehouse is like, right? And, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm and I'm and I'm always trying to envision what it's like over there when you know they're just so busy and you know they're at full capacity and it's just. You know, you know, I like to kind of envision what it's like over there. But no, I think, in my opinion, those days are over. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, if anything, I think this is better for us. Again, I mean, Glenn, I mean, you, you obviously said, you know, you can now upload 40 per day. I mean, realistically, can you upload 40 per day? I mean, maybe, probably, but maybe. the chances are really unlikely, right? Am I correct? Um, as far as like me working and YouTube channel and this and eBay and FBA, I'm probably not going to get 40 per day. Exactly. I have, start, I have to start cutting some, a lot of things out to get to that. Exactly. Point. So I think it's good to give people, uh, you know, limitations as to how many they can upload. And I, you know, and obviously things are going to change, right? I mean, yeah, that's what Amazon does. You know, they, they change things up every now and then. And, you know, sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes it's not, but. But I think uh, I think those days are over, man. I think uh, yeah. those the days where you can just upload, you know, what a hundred per day. Uh, I think <laughs> I think I think it's over. Yeah, I think it's over and done with. But I think I do think this is better. It's good to see progress. It's good to see certain updates. Um, even if I wasn't able to do it today, like let's say I didn't get that message today, but I saw other people were, then I'm just gonna assume it's gonna happen the next couple of days. You know, depending on what I'm you're doing. You know, hoping, I think, yeah. yeah, I think it's a good thing. And at least we're getting something because for a good while, it was like the same update was like no update. So yeah. I mean, good. I mean, I mean, they were giving us updates saying they don't have any updates. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that was, and, um, oh my gosh, I mean, has it been what, two, two months now, maybe even longer that we haven't been able to upload. Right. Um, I think it was a little bit uh, like first week of December. I think it hasn't been that long. Okay. I think it's so, been like maybe like a solid month and a half, maybe. A month and a half? Maybe okay. Or so. For some reason, it just seems like, you know. It just seems like these days are so long. Yeah. Yeah. No. Without no, uploading. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into our topic. The 10 best t-shirt design practices for merch. And... This is no particular order. It's just going to be top 10. So the first one we're going to start off is always using CMYK and not RGB. So uh, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. So anything that's you know on the web, on screen that you're looking at should be an RGB. Um, CMYK, it's kind of like, you know, printing press days you had to lay down ink you know each of them had like their own plate you had to do one by one to get the exact color that you want for cmyk yeah. so um you know digital printers have come a long way that you can print in rgb but if you want the definite true color that you want have your graphics in cmyk yeah and that and that's and that's also in their terms of services, if I recall, I don't have it in front of me, uh, but if I recall, they actually, they even state that it should be in CYMK. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So some of these are going to go a little bit quicker because that one, um, I think we should kind of it's already pretty, know about. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, so the next one, 
stay away from glitter, glow in the dark, <laughs> shiny metallic type of fonts, and maybe even some gradients. So what do you think about this? Um, it might be maybe on me a personal thing. They do talk a little bit about this also on the frequently asked questions, but uh, when you start throwing in to me like a lot of different filters and and messing with stuff, I do think the printing quality might get a little messed up. I don't know how great those printers are um, that the Amazon has, but they do tell you though, especially during Halloween, I saw a lot of like glow in the dark. Like, hey, glow in a dark t shirt and blah blah blah, which you what? really don't you don't really have any control that it actually glows in the yeah. dark. Yeah, I, I was gonna say it's like <laughs> how do you justify that's a glow in the dark? That, that just <laughs> I mean, just because maybe it's like some hot neon color they, they're advertising it as neon or glow in the dark. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Some of them were doing it. Some of them I have seen like glitter type of t shirts, like gold, pink type of like glitter so it looks like it but it's not gonna have that type of like shine to it that i think customers think it's gonna have i have seen some of those listings and some of the reviews on them hmm. and they're like bad reviews because they're like this doesn't even look yeah. glittery it doesn't even shine like in which i guess because if you try to do some type of filters or even if you try to do like a clipping mask of a glittery photo it's still not really gonna come out true glitter i guess <laughs> that yeah makes no sense. yeah no that that makes i mean no it does make sense but yeah it's just yeah s stay away from all those uh filters and all that with gradients though i i personally don't have a problem with using gradients i use a gradient in a lot of my shirts they come out well i no, personally yeah, haven't seen them i personally haven't one. seen them uh but at least um you know i've I, I, I never received any bad reviews or, you know, no returns. So I'm guessing it's, it's okay. Yeah. And that's what I put on my little statement. Some gradients. I have done them too, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of like you. I want to see, like, how well do they actually come out? Because I don't, like I said, I don't know how good these printers are. I mean, I have gotten some of the shirts printed from them and I got them. Some of them looked... I don't know, like maybe a couple of washes down the road, maybe not may not last that long. So I really don't mm. know, like if maybe it gets a little crazy when you're doing a lot of different filters and effects and crazy graphics or something. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. Let yeah. us know in the Facebook group if you have done any of that stuff and it comes out good. Yeah, yeah I'm kind of curious. Um, number three, use fonts that are easy to read and get the message across. And... <laughs> Because, tell you the truth, this kind of goes through, I guess, holds true to all graphic design. I mean, when I was in school making flyers, brochures, um, some people would use some fonts and I'm like, I don't really don't know what that says. And of course, professors would go all crazy and, you know, ripping their hair out and stuff because they're like, what is that? Why are you using that? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, only, the only reason I'm laughing is because I've gone through that, right? Yeah. So I know exactly what you're talking about. So I would hold this true for shirts because let's say you do like some type of crazy graffiti type font, like, oh man, that looks cool. But if someone can't read it or the customer kind of questions it, I don't think that's going to hold well for you. If yeah. uh, why, why would someone buy it if they don't know what it says or don't really know what it means? The message isn't clear. I would stick to something that, okay, cool. That's funny. I can see the tagline. I could read it. Something like that. I think that works. Yeah, and you know, we 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 talked about type and font before, and from my experience, just a general rule, rule of thumb, I think typically if you buy a premium font, most of the time, they're 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 pretty good. There are a bunch of free fonts out there for commercial use that are you know really clean and legible. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that's fine. But from my experience, premium fonts are typically legible and um, you, you can make them out. Yeah. Yeah. You'd really have to just take a look at it and see and test it out and, and just take a look for yourself. What do you think when you're when you're laying yeah. it out and and see how that looks? So because because when I go to like sites like the font dot com, I mean, you know, obviously a lot of those fonts are free, but a lot of them, they're just not legible. Yeah. 
I have no idea. You know, it's like how can how can someone read something like that? So <laughs> very true. So next one, number four, use bold, clean designs with colors that work well with your t-shirt color options. Now, if you guys remembered, if you guys watched that webinar that Amazon had, they were saying, you know, don't pick more than than three t-shirt colors. <laughs> That was that was a good one, you know. Right? I, that, I, that was a good trick. <laughs> Just I hope I hope people didn't fall for that trick. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And 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 what happened, Young? What happened during Q four? Well, obviously the black and navy being the most popular colors, they they sold out. And if all you did was have black and navy, well then your all your shirts in that particular color were sold out. Exactly. You're down to maybe one. If you took like that, uh, if you pick that dark gray asphalt looking color, maybe you're down to just that one color. And I like personally, I like to pick all five. I do too. And use all five. But in order to do this, you have to have colors in your graphic that work well with yes. all five of those t-shirt colors. So yes, you know, I've, could... I've seen, I've seen a lot of shirts out there with just really bad color schemes where the font, the color of the font doesn't match with uh, the actual, you know, color of the shirt. Yeah. And, and that could happen if maybe you do use the regular, maybe you're using the regular blue t-shirt, you have a design, but somewhere in the design, it's black. You have the color black somewhere and then you choose black as an option well, now it's just going to get lost. So mm -hmm. that black option isn't going to look good with your graphic because you're using the color black in the graphic. So it's just going to get lost, not going to look good. And the same thing goes with, you know, if you're picking the lighter colors, white, yellow, or that light gray, they're not going to, the graphic will not look good on those colors and the dark colors. Yeah. You're probably going to have to pick one or the other. Yeah. It, yeah, it has to have a nice contrast. Typically, you know, if I make a if I design a shirt, uh, if if the shirt's a dark color, I typically try and make my uh, font light, like white, yellow, something that's you know mm -hmm. the contrast is really noticeable. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, if if the shirts, if the color color of the shirt is white, you know, I try to use very dark fonts, you know, yeah. black, you know, navy, blue. Uh, so yeah, you know, make sure they uh, your design contrasts with the color color of your shirt. Yeah, and you'll notice too that a lot of um, you know companies that sell a lot of t-shirts, you see them all the time. Nike, you'll see like the Nike swoosh and the Nike logo, or you know their uh, their font. They might just have a regular t-shirt that has their logo, but their logo is white with the white text. So you can use that on as many you know, t-shirt colors as possible. Same thing with like the North Face. More than likely you'll see their logo white. So if their logo is white, then you'd see a bunch of different t-shirt colors that they could use that on. So um, I would just pay attention to something like that. And and you wouldn't want one of your colors to just be pretty much non-existent because you can't even see your graphic. Yeah. All right, so number five, use larger design elements. Nothing small that could get lost or hidden. You don't want people to have to figure something out, you know, with something small in there. I get a lot of, you're going to be, you guys would be surprised how many emails I get with ideas and examples that people want to do on a t shirt. It's crazy, you know, how much they want on there. And I've seen people that want to do kind of like a, I don't know, kind of like a comic thing. Like, what do you mean? Kinda, like, like telling a story almost like it starts from here and then it goes to here. Then it goes to here. Like to try to tell a joke, I guess. Like, I, it I, just I, sounds like, too much. Yeah, it's way too much. And the same thing goes with, um, um, you know, just graphics in general. They'll try to put like little wording into something and you can't really tell what that is and the same thing goes with them printing it so if they're going to print it let's say you do want to brand your own t-shirts you have your logo or font something that you use on the very bottom of the graphic 
I guess it really depends on how small that is. Cause like I said, I really don't know how good their printers are. I have seen good and bad, but if it's something really, really, really little, it might not print that well. Yeah. Yeah. It might Absolutely. be a little bit harder to see. So um, I'd probably just try to make sure you have larger, clear, bold design elements and, and not to really mess with small things. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with making the font small. But you just you don't want them too small, you know. Try and utilize the uh, the canvas that they provide. Yeah, and I think they make an also. Um, I guess a good point too is that if you're just browsing through T-shirts on Amazon, and you're just trying to see what else is out there and and going through them, you see twenty of them on a page. Are you more likely to look at the T-shirt that has like a bold, cleaner graphic that maybe draws you in? Or are you going to look at one of the t-shirts that looks like they have a lot of elements going on in their graphic. <laughs> There's something little in there that you can't really see. That means you'd have to click on that shirt, enlarge the shirt, and look at all this stuff. Compared to people that are just browsing, something might just catch their eye right off the bat. They don't have to go through all those extra steps. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. I mean, the last thing I want is someone staring at my chest for about 30 minutes trying to figure out you know what's what's in the design <laughs> <laughs> staring at your pecs yeah there you go <laughs> all right so number six just don't try to do too much try to stay away from i'm gonna see if this holds let's see what you think about this young but mm -hmm. for me i try to stay away from like people faces highly detailed objects like highly detailed even faces of animals like i've had a lot of weird requests um for designs and i just think it just gets too crazy like if someone someone tried to do i forgot what certain dog it was but they wanted like you know a, a head face of a dog but all the details of the dog down to like the little hairs mm. eyes looking like realistic but then they want like a tagline that's also like 10 words on the shirt and it just got a whole lot of stuff i'm like i just i just would rather not have all of that detail on there because you see a lot of the top selling shirts yeah and a lot of them are very very simple so simple that you're probably like no way that's selling right now yeah, well, I, I I tell you this, I tell you this much. About ninety five, maybe even ninety eight percent of my shirts are all text based. Mm -hmm. Simple, like Glenn said, they're simple, they're clean. Uh, there's hardly any graphics, and if they do have graphics, they're just basic graphics. Um, now I've seen T-shirts exactly what you described, you know, where it's highly detailed, right, of a, of a of a dog or a person, whatever, right. It's highly detailed. There's like all kinds of colors and it looks good. But as someone, and I'm sure like a majority of the listeners probably don't even have any design background. So when you're going to, so when you're doing a design or a shirt like that, first of all, number one, you're going to pay out of pocket for that. Okay. Okay. And I, and I know a lot of you guys don't want to spend too much on designs. You're gonna pay more than five, ten dollars for something like that for someone to do yeah. something like that. I mean, we're talking, you know, fifty, sixty, maybe even more. Um, so you're gonna pay a lot. Trust me, okay. Second of all, what's gonna happen if you just if you do say, well, I am gonna invest seventy bucks on this design because I think it's gonna work, and then you and then you have it designed and no one buys it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you have to consider it that way. So keep them simple, keep them, you know, basic. Again, 90, like I said, between 95 to 98% of my shirts are are just text-based, you know, simple graphics. You know, some might have like icons here and there, but, you know, they're all simple. Yeah. And maybe it could hold differently depending on who it is. I mean, we're, we can't do trademarked type of stuff. So it's not like you're going to do a highly detailed face of Michael Jordan or Prince or David Bowie or something like that. You're not going to do that anyway. 
So I don't know why we would, you know, go through this whole thing to do highly detailed faces or people, dogs, objects, you know, really, really detailed stuff. I just think it's a lot of work that you can probably be doing or knock out like 10 designs than to just work on one super detailed one if you were mm-hmm. working on them yourself. Right. Because I'll cause I, I t- I tell you one thing I learned. Uh, and it was, you know, and because I actually did this when I first started, you know, I spent like, man, like six, seven hours on one design because I wanted to make it really cool, right? You know, I, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. And then I, I didn't sell one. I was like, oh, heck with all this. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I kept it simple and, you know, and sure enough, you know, it's the simple ones that sell the most. Yeah, exactly. All right. So what you can, what you can do is design with, this is number seven, design with silhouettes, icons, mm-hmm. and great use of typography. So let's say you do still want a certain breed of a dog or something of a dog a silhouette to me would work better you can use one color on that and then you could use that same design on multiple color t-shirts instead of using a bunch of uh, different colors and um crazy details and stuff like that same thing with icons very simple looking icons that you can use um those work good and of course typography which we've talked about too I agree with everything you just said. And what about, um, I mean, silhouettes, you can, there's not, I guess one of the things we haven't really talked about, I guess, is how similar it could look. Maybe if someone has a certain pose, like the NBA logo, for example, NBA logo is a silhouette, right? Of Jerry West, Mm -hmm. Los Angeles Lakers. Yes, sir. So it makes you kind of, and Jordan logo, for example, another one. Supposed to be kind of like a silhouette of him dunking. So you can see, like, those are just simple one colored examples that you could use for anything. But trademark, I think, also comes into play if you're getting too crazy with some silhouettes, maybe too close um, to certain brands or or a certain person. You can only get away with so much, but, you know, make it individual, make it unique. And a silhouette's icon type typography will always do good i mean they're very simple and they look clean yep all right so number eight you would think that this one is kind of obvious but it's not number eight stay away from (laughs) i kind of made fun of this but four (laughs) paragraphs slash (laughs) short novels on a t-shirt try to only use you know, a funny tagline or a couple of words. Um, man, like I had, I had one client that just, he was just insistent on getting, it was like a quote or something that he wanted to use um, that I don't even know who said it or anything like that. Or I don't know, something that he liked, I guess was kind of motivational. Mm-hmm. This was like three sentences long. And yeah, that's too I was much. like, there's just no way this is going to fit on here. I mean, you only have so much space that you can use and you're using all of this typography on here. There's just no need. Like it, it's just, it got out of control. But the weird thing is he wasn't the only one. Like I had others that tried to do a little bit less, but it was still too much. It was still like 12 to 14 words that it was kind of pushing. I mean, you can only do so much. I have seen some that that can pull it off, but I think it really just depends what it is too. But I, I would really stay away from a lot of that stuff. Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, you have to ask yourself, I mean, where are these quotes and, and all these statements coming from? Because they could be trademarked. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and second of all, you know, just look around, you know. At least when I'm out and about, I don't, I don't ever recall seeing a shirt that has like a novel statement or something, you know, like like a paragraph. I don't I don't ever recall seeing anything like that. I've seen them on Amazon. Yeah. But it's you know, but if I'm out and about and I see something like that, I mean to me it doesn't it's not attractive because, you know, at least initially it just looks like a bunch of words. <laughs> and what and what's cool about having a paragraph on a on a t shirt? I mean, you know, I'd rather look at a shirt that's that has a really good design 
Yeah, it'd probably go back to what you said. Like someone's just gonna sit down and stare at you, and what is that shirt saying? Just try to like (laughs) read the whole thing. I mean, I mean, if you want to, if you want people to read something, buy them a book or something. I don't know, but (laughs) why would you want to put it on the shirt? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think. Oh man, some of those ideas just got a little, a little out of hand. But yeah, no, I've seen him. I've seen him on Amazon where people put lyrics to a song on the shirts, and again, it's just why would you do something like that it's just it makes no sense which is trademarked as well with i've had maybe two to three questions ask me about music stuff and lyrics and and which i mean just to let everybody know i mean you can't use that either i mean it's it's trademarked to you know the artist that came up with the lyrics or the band or whoever but yeah stay away from that too you don't want to get in trouble (laughs) (laughs) All right, so number nine, um, know your target audience. And for my example, I'm saying, you know, if I was a dad or world's best grandpa, put yourself in that position. Would I like this shirt? Would I wear this shirt? You know, if I had world's best grandpa, not all grandpas are going to like pink graphics on the black shirt. So, I probably wouldn't pick pink, you know, as the main color for my graphic. Maybe I would go with navy blue and white or black and white or something a little bit more traditional that maybe a grandpa would wear. So when you are designing, I would keep that in mind to know your target audience, put yourself in their position. Right. And see if, hey, if someone, if a dad or grandpa or mom or grandma would buy this, how would it look? Would this look good? Would they wear it? Yeah. Yeah. For instance, if I don't know, uh, if you're designing a shirt for a bridesmaid, don't use something, you know, don't use like, you know, like a bold font or type, you know, you want to use, try and use something a little more feminine, you know, like a script font, something, yeah. something that the, 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 the ladies would appreciate. Yeah. You might even have to go and get grandpa off the couch and ask him, Hey, does this look good? Like, would you wear this? No, and that's and that's not a bad idea, right? I mean, ask around. Yeah, it's good to always get feedback and everything. Um, you know, that's something that would someone buy? Of course, make sure they tell you the truth and not just trying to be nice. But yeah, <laughs> if that's something what they would buy, then I don't know. Hopefully, that would let you know and be truthful with you. But I would always, um, you know, try to see who you're building audience for, especially for like. Like you said, bridesmaids, I think that's a good example because I've seen bridesmaids, wedding type stuff on there. And, you know, I think people are pretty picky when it comes to that stuff. Imagine picking out like a dress and next thing you know, you have T-shirts on there that I'm pretty sure they're going to be really picky about the design and color yeah. and all of that. Absolutely. So, of course. All right. And the last one, number 10, don't be scared to use. At least I like to use. 75 percent more or less of the design space um you don't have to use the full layout of 5400 by 4500 pixel design you don't have to use the full thing you also don't have to use just like the first 25 or 30 percent to where maybe it's just like a small word or something just on the chest i mean you can use as much as possible don't be scared to utilize that full space to make a good design can I can I can I uh, admit something here? Uh, just great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna admit some. Um, what you said is great, but however, I do have some designs where I might just use twenty percent of the canvas because it's only one because it's only like one word or something, right? Only like one word. What like kind of designs are these? Man, like your shirt that says "eat." Yeah, man. Toilet. Yeah, like random exactly. words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, absolutely, but no. But you're right. I mean, if if you're gonna do something that's design heavy, try and utilize most of the canvas. Um, I have a lot of shirts that's you know just one or two words. That's mm-hmm. why you know I don't take up a lot of space. But yeah, I mean, utilize the space. That's why it's there. Yeah, and I think I think at the beginning though when I first started designing stuff, I was like, 
I really wanted to use the full canvas. Like I used the full design. Oh, did you? Sometimes it got like really huge. I was like, yeah, I don't think that really looks good. But over time, I was like, you know what? I kind of started to see a little trend on what was working for me. And I did do a video on this, I think mm, three months ago or so uh, on my YouTube channel where I just talked about, I guess, utilizing the space and how you can do it with like typography. So um, let's say, what's a... Uh, Okay, let's say for example, Dallas. Okay, this is this is kind of a bad example because it's trademarked. But let's say you're using Dallas Cowboys for your word or words you want to put on your shirt. Some people will do Dallas Cowboys on one line and it would go across the chest. Mm -hmm. Some people will do Dallas on top cowboys on bottom and use two lines of typography i have found that using two lines seems to work better because the words are bigger and they're bolder and you can read it better some people might want to just do like i said one line but if you do that depending how long the words are that you're trying to put across the chest they might be a little too small to read yeah, but I mean, and, and maybe this is, maybe, maybe this is where we disagree. But I mean, oh, really? Just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, you don't want your designs too small. But at the same time, uh, there's nothing wrong with having it. Uh, I mean, there's no reason to like just have everything big. Like again, I mean, some of my best sellers are like a couple of words, and they're small. Um, and they're, you know, and in my opinion, there's something to attract people when they're close up, and you know, and they can you can engage in a conversation or whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, obviously they're not going to see it from you know 50 feet away, but when you know if if you're walking by or if you're in a crowd and if someone sees it, you know, it, it'll spark a conversation. I'm gonna have to look up some of these simple word T-shirts that you're explaining or trying to talk about because. Now I'm very interested in. Themes. Well, for, for for instance, um, I mean, I'm not going to tell you what word I use, but um, uh, I have a shirt that has a hash mark, um, and you know, hash mark, and then the word. Oh, okay. Uh, and then um, yeah, and then and, you know, it, I sold tons of those. Hashtag dad bod. <laughs> what? <laughs> what <did> you say? <laughs> Hashtag what? <laughs> dad bod. What is that? Oh, dad oh. bod. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I was like, I'm like, what is he talking You're about? Like, what is he saying? <laughs> I'm like, he's talking some gibberish all of a sudden. <laughs> but like, yeah, this, I mean, this podcast is over. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so I mean, and um, you know, and I I didn't make it super big where it's like you know all you know across the whole chest, but I made it small. Again, you know, maybe utilizing about twenty percent of the canvas, and uh, yeah, you know. People, you know, people, people have been buying it. Okay, so like we said, we're not paid for professionals. So I am. You can do. You can do one or the other. Find <laughs> out what works for you, and let us know in the Merch Minds Facebook group. Because now I'm very interested in what people do. What would you prefer? Not only to design, but to buy one or two or maybe three lines, depending how many words you have. Typography when you lay it out on your t-shirt let me know yeah let me know too because i'm curious <laughs> all right so that was our 10 best t-shirt design practices for merch and uh you want to let everybody know anything else about facebook group or reviews sure. or nothing or sure um as always you know we have closing comments uh, closing thoughts uh as glenn mentioned we do have a new facebook group it's 100% free to join. Um, that'll be in the show notes. If you guys do join, make sure you read the pinned post in the group. It's very important that you guys read it, that you guys understand what the group is about. Uh, so make sure you go ahead and read that. And as always, at the end of the show, I'm always asking for reviews. Guys, I think last I checked in the group, we have over 80 people in the facebook group but yet we only have 20 reviews and so if you're part of huh? 27 to be exact are you, are you serious yeah we got like 27 reviews 
Oh, well, I got to oh, go hey. back and check, man. Oh, in that See, case, we're good. It just well, you know what? There's, there's a reason why I flunked math in college. <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, so, I mean, please, guys, leave us a review. Uh, it helps positive. us out. Yeah, positive, negative. I mean, we love to hear from you guys. And, you know, um, and I don't know about you, Glenn. I've said this, I've said this before, man. I, Dude, I respond to every message that I get. So, and email and everything else. Yeah. He's a busy man, but not yeah. busy enough for all of us, including me. He still responds. Hey, hey we, we talk. I mean, we talk today <laughs> on the phone, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. We, yeah. We, talk, we talk on a regular basis. Glenn, Glenn's my boy. He was like, what's the deal with this thing? How come I can't upload anything? Just I, 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 I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed I couldn't upload. But I can tell you that the Facebook group, i um, really excited. Thank you, everybody, for um, that have joined so far, um, like 84 members so far um, that have joined. And it's been good. I think um, like good amount of posts per day. Everyone's pretty much being active and stuff. And um, I like to see what everybody's talking about. And everybody's kind of, you know, of course, curious right now about the uploading. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of cool stuff on there. So um, join right now and join the group. That to Ching was uh, my merch. I just sold another shirt. Oh, look at this guy selling during the podcast. Hey, hey, I don't mess around. <laughs> I, right, just bought my own, I, just, I just bought my own shirt. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. But yes, All right. thank you guys, and we will see you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you.